Hey guys, excuse the poor lighting. Uh, this is a test pretty much of what I wanted to do for uh, Trucking Thursday. So you guys pretty much get a view of what I see and then I'll talk to you. Uh, this will be called Wheels Wednesday. It's just a test so I don't really expect to be making more of these videos, the Wheels Wednesdays, but let's just see what goes on. So I'm going to sit down, hop into a, another company's truck over here and uh, basically see how the audio sounds, if this is worth it. Otherwise, you know, I'll go back to the old school style videos, how I would just sit and talk to you guys. So um, let me hop in another truck, see if you guys like this. I won't be able to tell until the editing process, but I'll probably upload this anyway, see what you guys think. So all right, let's get to it. And again, pardon the poor lighting. I need to really figure out some type of lighting situation here, so. Uh, let's do a T680 high-rise sleeper, see how that works out for us. Doesn't look too bad of a job. Uh, this one's even cheaper. Let's see how bad this one is. Where are we going here? Uh, that one looks like less of a journey. So I just want to make this quick since it is a test. We're driving electronic components from Reading to Bakersfield. I've gotten a little bit better and I'm going to buy another truck soon, so probably after this job. I'm going to purchase a Peterbilt, which is really interesting being that I'm a Kenworth type of guy. I really do like Kenworths, but driving Peterbilts is kind of fun. They handle really nice. This of course is a more modern Kenworth. And when I say modern, I mean more modern in looks. Right? Nobody coming there. Somebody coming there. I like to just gently ease on out of here, just in case somebody comes up. That way they do have time to break. Um, but this is pretty much what I see, guys. You're looking at what I'm looking at. I need to pull that out a little bit further. I'm in fourth gear, believe it or not. Well, actually, third. This is fourth, currently. Driving one of these, it's a fun job, but it's a hard job. You gotta kind of want to drive these. You gotta have a passion for them. I don't know how many speeds this is. I'm guessing it's probably a 10 speed, maybe. Maybe an eight, 18 speed transmission. But like, I'm in sixth now and I'm only doing about 15. And the speed limit here is 30. Yeah, it's a, it's about an 18 speed. But, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some things, since, you know, this pretty much is a test. Uh, I like driving. I like talking to you guys. It is distracting. Um, I will have a tr uh, truck and talk Thursday coming out tomorrow. Um, but I find myself, I'm listening to a lot of different music these days, and that'll be the subject, well, it'll kind of relate to tomorrow, but the music I'm listening to, which I never really thought I'd give a thought to, or like, I'm listening to a lot of older country music now. Stuff from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Because, just my honest opinion, Today's country music really isn't for me. It's, I hate to say it, but it's a little too mainstream. It's too poppy, honestly. You know, it's more about fun and relaxation and not the struggles, which I know sounds weird, right? You know, I kind of like listening to music that kind of relates to pretty much what we were, you know, not we as in me in general, but kind of like the males in my family the kind of things they go to, because 
a lot of my family members were middle class working guys, well, not even middle class, working guys come home from a hard day's work, want to relax. And by that, I mean fading away, watching TV. Um, you know, just the average, and I think a lot of you guys know what I mean. Just your prototypical idea of America. You know, nobody in my family really was a semi truck was a semi truck driver. One of my uncles was a loader. He worked in Pennsylvania loading uh, paper products into here, into the trailers of these. But um, you know, oh, getting distracted. Time to put that engine brake on. Do we not have one on here? Huh. Guess we don't have an engine brake here. That's a little scary. Oh, we got one. I just don't see the little indicator for it. Um, again, this cabin is a little bit different. Like, the fuel gauge is actually in dead center of where my RPM gauge is and my speedometer. I hope you guys can see that. Um, speed limit here is 50, 55. I'm only doing about 40. Oh, wow. Okay. That's where I want it. I want the truck in about 11, and I want it in 12th. Okay, probably want to put it in 13th. There we go. That's better. But yeah, so, I enjoy some of the older country music. I was pretty big into it around the early 2000s. And then kind of dropped off. I got more into like hip hop and kind of like older hip hop, like the gangsta genre. So it was like Ice Cube, N.W.A., Dr. Dre, um, a lot of stuff like that. Got into more rock as high school progressed. Um, what else? You know, like. I got into Smashing Pumpkins, pretty much anything that was on the local Philadelphia station, the WMMR. It's uh, 93.3 WMMR, because I would listen to Preston and Steve in the mornings with my mom when I would go to school. And we were doing that ever since 8th grade, but again, 8th grade I was more into hip-hop. And, you know, I loved a lot of the uh, classic hip-hop like Tupac and Biggie Smalls, um, stuff like that. And it's just, in a weird way, I could kind of relate. I kind of like the music. Um, but yeah, I, I found uh, this group, Alabama. Uh, 40 Hour Week was a song that always appealed to me. Because again, you know, it talks about just the people in the jobs that we don't really think about, like the guy bringing in the load, the waitress, the mechanic, the police officer on patrol, um, the Detroit auto workers, which we don't really think too much about anymore, or some people don't. I'm not trying to get political, it's just, you know, a lot of people forget that America used to put out cars, and, you know, a lot of people, you guys know, aren't like us. They really just see transportation or cars as a way of getting from point A to point B. Or with us, it's, you know, looks, engine. We like a lot of different factors about the car. Um, another good old song by Alabama was, uh, what's it called? Song of the South. You know, it starts out talking about the Great Depression. sweet potato pie and I shut my mouth. You know, it's just talking about how America will come back again. How we've gone through so many struggles 
during the Depression. And, you know, it pretty much just gives the portrayal of this guy's family, of the lead singer's family, which is he lived on a farm, the Dust Bowl came, pretty much wrecked his family's living, uh, got a bailout, his dad and him moved to the, his mom got sick, uh, his family moved to the city, his dad got a job with, I think it's the TPA or WPA, and they bought a Chevrolet and a washing machine, you know, doing things just to take care of themselves. So that's kind of why I like older country music, but, but, you know, I've always had, like, weird eclectic tastes in my house. My grandfather always listened to, uh, listened to a lot of country music. I think it was mostly country music, honestly. Uh, my mom, it was a lot of stuff like rock and roll, 70s stuff. Um, my brother pretty much listens to whatever's popular, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, me, I listen to like a whole mix of that. I got into uh, hip hop on my own, uh, classic rock, kind of was from my mom. Um, I love Fleetwood Mac. You know, they're one of my favorite bands. I listen to them all, all like a lot of the time. Um, you know, mostly songs with Stevie Nicks on there, oh, with Stevie Nicks on vocals. I love a lot of Stevie Nicks's uh, vocal work. Um, as if you guys couldn't tell from one of my previous videos. Uh, you know, Seven Wonders is one song I listen to a lot of. Uh, Go Your Own Way was cool. Uh, Never Going Back Again. You know, stuff like that. And that's really, like, soft rock. Um, I got into grunge more as I got into, uh, like, a couple of years ago into, um, kind of like post-punk, kind of like the ending of grunge, like the Pixies, the Smashing Pumpkins. Well, I always knew about the Smashing Pumpkins through, um, high school, but I got into, like, the Pixies after taking History of Rock, which people said was really... My mom and brother were having a conversation about that, and my mom's like, no, you're not taking that, Ken. It's a hard course. Where me, I kind of took it, and this isn't one of my better moments. I took it, got through it, uh, didn't really study horribly. Gotta be. As my overall grade. Um, I knew a lot because I had worked in a radio station for school during my senior year. Uh, my high school had its own radio station, um, WMPH. We played mostly classic pop, classic pop, and classic rock. So, and even then, in school, I kind of knew. In high school, I kind of knew more than the average bear about like the music we were playing, because it's just stuff that was always playing in my household with my family listening to, so. Going down a hill, so I gotta hold in the clutch, hold in the brake. Drop it in the first. See if anybody's coming. Nobody's coming that way. Nobody's coming that way. I get a little nervous going up and down hills in these, uh, semi-trucks, because I've been on loads where I'd actually, uh, get up the hill have to stop because there's somebody in front of me, be stopped on the hill, and actually, like, kill the truck because it wouldn't be in a low enough gear. So. Uh, I also was, you know, I was the weird kind of guy when it came to music tastes in my school. I also liked a lot of, um, I liked some classical music. Well, not really classical, it was Lake Amis Flower Duet. That to me was just a good song. Um, I listened to some Marvin Gaye in high school. I listened to some, uh, 
I listened to some Frank Sinatra, believe it or not. Uh, That's Life was a song that played a lot on my iPod, would be in, like, constant rotation. I just, I like that song, because, you know, it just said, life's going to get you down, pretty much, but you just got to come back up. You just got to come back swinging that life. And that's something that is real easy to forget at times. Um, I actually found a cover of it by David Lee Roth that was in Spanish. So, for Spanish class, when they're like, what are some of the things you do outside of the class to help you understand and learn Spanish? And I put, uh, she's like, for example, watch Spanish television, um, listen to music in Spanish. I put that, and she, you know, just to get extra participation points, I actually listed like half of the, I listed a lot of stuff I would listen to, and whether it was like a mix of Spanish and English. I put David Lee Roth, and I wrote in Spanish the title of the song, but I forget that now, I think it was like, I forget what it was, but I wrote the title of the song and put in parentheses, that's life, in Spanish, so. I have to take another Spanish class, which I'm not too happy about. I don't know, I just haven't really done well with language. It's English is hard enough for me as it is. You know, and it's not the speaking of the language. Well, part of it is the speaking of the language, but a lot of it is the sight stuff, the reading, the grammatical rules, the spelling is horrible. Oh, man. Half the time when I write something in English, it's hard for me to remember how to spell, you know, words or what's there. There was always a trick to it that I kind of remembered. Because um, it's like there, T-H-E-R-E, there, T-H-E-I-R, there, as in they are, T-H-E, or T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E. And Spanish has those same kind of like wacky, goofy, well, not wacky, goofy, but, you know, has those similar rules, so. Man, I swear sometimes if my vision was perfect, I just, I wouldn't be going to college, I'd just be doing, doing this, driving for a living. But I'm not the best at that either, so maybe it's a good thing that my vision isn't that great and that I'm in college. Um... You know, and it's it's a dying profession out here. You know, everybody loves those, or a lot of people are getting on board with the autonomous cars. Don't get me wrong, that's a cool idea. It would help me out tremendously to have a self-driving car. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm a, I'm a good old boy. Not really. I was born in the northern part of Delaware. You guys who know uh, geog geography or a little bit of history. Delaware was considered a southern state, but I never really saw it. I mean, it's a little southern down where I live now compared to where I used to be. But, you know, I like shifting. I like actually feeling the steering wheel. I like hitting the get, uh, you know, monitoring or adjusting gas, the pressure on the gas, uh, the accelerator. I like the brake, you know. I kind of like doing that stuff for myself as far as this game goes, but, you know, autonomous self-driving cars are just another way that it's getting me a little bit closer to independence. It, it'd be awesome. You know, I don't want to poo-poo that away and say, oh, no, it's either I drive or, you know, it's either my way or the highway. thought that was kind of funny to put in here, but it's like, you know, it's a, it's a happy alternative. But, you know, for somebody who's kind of always been a car nut, always been interested in transportation, mostly automotive transportation, you know, roadway, it's nice, it's good. I won't say it's, you know, it's not what I want, but it's something that I'll have to settle for, for now. I mean, who knows? Not to get too political or religious, but stem cells might be able to help my eyes I might be able to get back 
you know, I might be able to have sight that I didn't have before. That'd be really awesome. I just, I'd love to drive, you know, not even professionally, just I'd love to drive. The fact that I wouldn't have to schedule a day in advance before the out, you know, after uh, 6 o'clock, but before 4.30 p.m., because that's how I get back and forth to places that take paratransit or the bus. Uh, paratransit is a door-to-door -door service for, I believe it's for the elderly or handicapped uh, people who live in my state, handicapped Delawareans. Um, and, you know, the thing that I learned is it's best to schedule a trip and out to be at a location an hour before. Because you never know, you might get people on a wheel who are in wheelchairs and need extra assistance. You get people who forget to set their alarm clocks and the driver waits for them for a few minutes. So I always schedule it like that. But, I mean, just driving would give me a whole nother level of independence. But, you know, it's just not in the cards. And I don't mean to down make anybody feel down, but driving's just... You guys who always could drive... You know, I hope you never take that for granted. It's just something that once, if you've always looked forward to having it and never could have it. Oh, here we go. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. Well, this time I could at least downshift in time to get up to get up the hill. But yeah, those of you who've always been able to drive, you know. Don't ever take that for granted. I know some of you out there don't like driving. You know, there's probably a few random people who will come across this Wheels Wednesday test. But yeah, don't ever take driving for granted. So, um, but, you know, I, I do pretty well on my own. The nearest bus stop here is about four miles. It's a good amount of walking. Um, I did it once in the summer on the hottest day, scared the crap out of my mom because I came, I actually, uh, went around, you know, some of the old places I used to hang out the mall, um, went to the mall, went, kind of went to the downtown area of a, uh, part of a city in here, uh, the city of Wilmington, uh, went to my mom's work, which really isn't that far from the city, but, uh, you know, done that before. How I'm getting to college is mostly on paratransit. It's an okay, it's a, it's a good system. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's good. You know, it gets me there reasonably. Um, it's not too, too expensive. It's about five bucks each way. Well, five bucks each way from my house. Go in anywhere. So, um, and that's pretty much that. But, yeah, if I could drive, that'd be awesome. But, you know, still holding hope. Never going to give up on that. But for right now, it's just not in the cards. Used to really get to me when I was younger, man. I used to all, I used to say to my mom all the time, I want to drive, I want to drive, I want to drive, I want to drive. Oh, if you guys are wondering, yeah, I did that one-handed. I'm also going to do this turn one-handed. And then I'll do the next turn with two hands. I should turn off my engine brake. Just slow down. Maybe downshift here. Downshift in the 10th gear. 
Alright, two hands this time. Alright, let off the gas, push on the clutch, push on the brake. There we go. So that's one delivery down. Uh, usually for these videos I pull in, I play it safe. But I'll show you kind of how difficult it is for me to back a trailer into where they want to do. This might actually be an easier one. So first thing I do, I downshift this boy all the way into first. There we go. I put my four-way flashers on, just so everybody knows that, hey, I'm dropping off. I try to look around a little bit, see where I'm going. I have my standard lights on, I don't have high beams on. I believe it's... Okay, see those green things right there? That's where I need to back into. And I believe I touched, yeah, I touched a barrier or I killed my truck somehow. Backing up. I hope you guys can hear. I do have the backup uh, noise. Let me stick my head out of this bad boy. Because what I should do is actually go turn around. I should turn the truck around and actually back into the spot like that. Uh, do I have room to do it? Well, probably don't have enough room to do it, but... Uh, do, do, do. Yeah. This one's going to be tricky. You can see there it's starting to kick out on me. I used to be better at backing... Oh, 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 oh. What happened there was my steering wheel was kicking, which means I hit something, so my steering wheel was vibrating. So backing this in is actually going to be a huge pain. And then also cheater view. <laughs> but a lot of you truckers out there wish you could do that. Just get an aerial view of where your truck is. But also too, I've heard that these yards aren't really too accurately scaled to accommodate trucks. I've heard that, you know, because the publishers of this game are European, that they're kind of not really basing it off of American standards, they're kind of doing it more off of European standards where you have tight corners and tight spots. So, that's just what I heard. I don't know how true that is. I know the, uh, I know this game was, like, the publishing office is, I think it's in the Czech Republic, which I believe is in Europe. I hope I don't sound dumb, but... Again, geography really was not my strong suit, so feel free to correct me if I am wrong in saying that the Czech Republic is not in uh, Europe, but I have a feeling it is. Oh, forget this. And I mean, guys, come on, look at that. It's a little 34-footer. I couldn't back that in. Oh, and I stalled it. Yeah, see, we're on a barrier there. Brake. Clutch. I don't know what, I, what I'm hitting there. 
looks like an invisible wall. But yeah. This is a railroad terminal, so. I'm on the curb there. Uh, you know what, guys? Shoot. I'll just hit enter. I'm kind of hungry. Satisfactory, you know. That's green. I don't know what color it's showing on there. A little bit of damage. I don't know what for. Probably hitting those invisible barriers. It says I'm a professional. Go figure. But, uh, well, alright, guys. That's my test for Wheels Wednesday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So... Probably in Trucking Thursday, I'll have, yeah, I think, I, yeah, I have enough to buy a new truck that I want, so, well, alright guys, hope you enjoyed Wheels Wednesday, my test.